the last video we set up the Matsuya Matsuya Matsu 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 What is going on guys? Phil here from Phil's Craft Corner. I'm still at the workshop. Last video we set up the Masuta Pro CNC router from Fox Alien and uh, this video we are squaring off the gantry make sure nothing's twisted or gone askew uh, during setup and we're going to make sure the spindle is square to the table too. So let's get over, let's get into it and uh, it's a fairly simple process so this will be a fairly quick video. So hopefully you can follow along and you can get yours nice and squared and set up too. All right, so the things we need to square this off is a decent square. I have checked this with my digital angle finder and it's 0.1 degree off being 90 degrees. So I think that's accurate enough. Uh, tape measure for checking the diagonal squares so that this is not askew, which if you measure across that side, is it could be twisted that way bit exaggerated but uh, that both sides will still measure the same but they'll be on an angle that way at the same angle and still measure the same so it's askew uh, rather than being twisted in like that which is harder to, uh, which is easier to detect it's harder to detect whether it's twisted so we'll show you how to do that as well and uh, we need a couple of allen keys to loosen and tighten some of the bolts so the things we are checking for is like I say is whether these two y axes are parallel to each other and also square with the x axis and whether the x axis and the spindle mount are square with your work surface. So let's get started with checking for things being askew and whether or not the y axis are parallel to each other with the tape measure. So to check whether they are parallel, you just get your tape measure and measure each one. So I've got 59.6 millimeters at the front. Let's double check at the back. And 59.6 at the back. So we know that these are parallel to each other. The next one we'll check is whether these are askew, which means whether they are twisted together at the same time. And to do that, you measure it from corner to corner. I would measure from this corner back to that corner, but the control box is in the way, so we're just gonna go the other way around. When you do this, you need to make sure that your tape measure is in the same point on each corner. So just touching it on the inside corner there, and I have 81.1 millimeters that way. And we'll check this side. So that's the side there. And we have 81 and a half, roughly. And if I put it in there, we have 81.1 because of this angle. So let's double check that again. I'm gonna put that right on the top of that angle and I'll hold it in. We've got 81.1. We'll do the same over here. I'm gonna put that right on that little angle piece there. I'm gonna hold it there. Then we have 81.1. So that's nice and square to each other. So at this point I'm gonna tighten all of these down because I didn't tighten them down during assembly. Well, they were fairly tight, just a tiny like quarter of a turn. So now we know this outside frame is parallel and square. Um, where this board sits on there doesn't really matter because the cutting area is smaller than this whole board so that's perfectly fine and my spoil board is going to go on the top of here anyway 
The only thing that I'm probably going to do is I'm going to put a board along the X and Y axis to be able to square into one side. I do that on my laser and it just helps line everything up a lot easier, uh, especially for repeat cuts and if I've got to line like uh, a second pass on something, it just helps line that up a bit better. So uh, we're going to do that when I set up the spoil board. Next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that the Y axis are running parallel with each other. What I mean is I know the gantry itself is parallel with each other, but these motors, if I turn that one, don't know if you can notice, but the the whole X axis racks slightly and goes askew. So if I'm moving this motor, I don't know if you can see that, but that moves I'd say at least six millimeters before that one moves if I manually move them. So what I want is the front of these to be at exactly the same distance from any point on here. So usually what I would do is I'd put a piece of wood, for example the piece that you get with it, and I'd put it up against the frame but where the belts come through on each side are slightly different. So that's a little bit of a pain there. What I can do, maybe, is if I sat that, that way, that's what I'm gonna do. Brought this back, that will hit the limit switch first. I need a bigger bit of wood. This one. <laughs> right, so that's hit there. So I know where that is. So this one, hopefully. Oh. I can't put this piece of wood in here because this is where all the limit switches are. I can't do it on the back because the limit switch itself is over there. So we'll have to do this with a tape measure. And again, I'm gonna do it from the back because the control box is on this side and that'll make it a little bit more difficult. Gently, I'm gonna bring this, let's say, there. We'll check this side from there to there. I'm gonna bring this down to an even number. So I've took that down to 13, mil 13 centimeters exactly. And if I check this side, that comes back at 13 centimeters. So it does move parallel to each other. I think it will catch up to itself when it's moving. Um, I do need to tighten down the x-axis screws, but before I do that, I'm gonna make sure that this x-axis isn't twisted backwards or forwards. There is a little bit of play there, and that will also help tighten up and stop these moving and going askew. So I've obviously moved the machine around and we've got a better view for you, so you can see whether or not this is square. So I'm going to take my square, I'm going to come up to the front, I don't think you can see. This is difficult to get the angle for you. There. Right, so I finally got the right angle there. As you can see, there is a light gap there. The top of this touches and the bottom of it does not. And it's the same when I go onto the frame. So I know that this spindle is angled towards this way. So what I need to do is I need to pull that frame square, which will be right there. Where there's no light gap. And then tighten it down. So that is very, very, very close, like the tiniest gap, like it's probably not even a hair. So we're gonna call that okay. Alright guys, that is 
pretty much all you need to do to make sure that your CNC router is square to the bed, that the frame is square with each other, and that nothing is askew and moving randomly around where it shouldn't be, so that if you want to cut a circle, you get a circle, a square will make a square, and you get good right angle corners and things like that. This is never going to be as accurate as a 10,000 pound machine and I don't need it to be that accurate. I'm only cutting simple shapes out on this thing. And as far as this goes so far, I'm very happy with it. Once I get my spoil board in place and I get that leveled off with spindle so that um, that shows me how level the board is because this side might be higher than this side. And until I get the spoil board on and level it off that way, we're never gonna know. This wasn't to do that. This wasn't a video about that. This was how to square off your framework and your spindle mount and your X axis. So everything is now square with each other. We should be pretty good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the drivers installed on my laptop. We're gonna get this all put into place. I'm gonna get the test board put on and we're gonna do a test cut next. So that's gonna be another video, obviously, because these videos get fairly long and we don't, we don't wanna bore you too much with one video doing everything. I wanna break things down so that you can do things step by step too. Uh, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this was good information for somebody out there and it helps you maybe eliminate some issues that you might be having with your CNC. If it did help, then hit that thumbs up button let me know if you want to follow along and learn some cnc work with me because i am brand new this is my first cnc so if you want to follow along hit that subscribe button and we can all learn a brand new process together and get some great experience so with that said i will catch you guys in the next video